In this particular video, we're going to take a look at the fractured strings library and what each control specifically does. In the top left hand corner, we have the LED light. This is an indication of whether we have samples still loading into the RAM of our machine. When this is solid green, you can then hit play. Following on from that, we've got the CPU meter, and this is an indication of how hard the CPU of our machine is working. We then have the disk meter, which is an indication of how hard the samples drive we're streaming the data from is working. The memory option then shows us exactly how much RAM this preset is taking up in our machine. All these values add up across each plugin that you have loaded as a master value. We then have the voices option, which shows us exactly how many audio threads we're streaming at any one point in time. The refresh icon is really useful for any sticking MIDI notes, and this can also be right clicked for a further few options, such as refreshing all instances that we have open in our DAW. The mode switching option allows us to switch between the Evo grid and also the standard interface. Moving to the right, we have the MIDI channel option. This should be left as any unless you're specifically looking to isolate the plugin on any particular MIDI channel. By keeping this as any, it means you can key switch the library using one of the 16 MIDI channels per articulation. We then have a global tune and pan control, followed by a master volume. And moving to the right, we have the preset settings. So these are the settings that operate on a per preset basis. The dynamics option allows us to change the behavior of the middle fader on the interface. The velocity allows us to set custom velocity curves to the touch of our keyboard. So if we have a keyboard which has quite a soft touch, we might wish to set this to exponential positive in order to trigger louder samples more easily. We then have the clear and reset CC mappings option which will restore or clear any CC that is assigned to any particular parameter on the interface. We can see which CCs are assigned by right-clicking any control. To the right of this, we then have the global plugin settings. There is more information about each of these settings in the user manual. Moving down the interface, we then have the expand and collapse button. And to the left of this, we have the preset bar, which has a left and right arrow to shift through the presets and also a save icon so we can save our own custom presets. When we've saved our own custom presets, they appear in the user filter when we've expanded the preset menu. Within the preset menu itself, we have a number of filters on the left hand side. So for example, I can show all violin patches or all solo violin patches. When I've used this star icon to favor a preset, it then shows up under the starred filter. I can then use the clear option at the top to get rid of the filters. We then have a preview option followed by the preset name. And if we hover over the I button, we can see a little bit of information about that particular preset. We can load any preset by double clicking or clicking and pressing the load button at the bottom. Once more moving down the interface, we have the three main controls. The fader on the left is for expression, which is CC number 11, and it operates as a volume control within the master volume of the library. We then have the dynamics fader in the middle, which will take us from a soft, quiet dynamic to a loud, more aggressive dynamic. The knob control to the right is by default reverb and when clicked we can see there are further options in this case we have release release enables you to extend the amount of release trigger that is heard if we'd like to hear slightly less natural room tone we can dial this back to the left moving down the interface we then have the techniques here we can see all the different articulations for that available preset to the right of the techniques, we have the technique editor. Here, similar to the preset editor, we can preview a sound, but we could also add in numerous techniques into the preset and remove them. We can also reorder them around. And as we can see, when we then save the technique editor, we have less articulations in the preset than when we first started. 
Moving to the top right of the technique editor, if I was to drop down so we can see the generic key switches, we can see by clicking and dragging this, we can change the range of the key switches. We then have a padlock, which enables us to lock all the articulations and techniques in place. The trigger method operates on a per technique basis. So here we can change exactly which type of trigger method we'd like to switch the different articulations. So for example here, I could change to set the very first articulation as MIDI channel, and I can set this below to MIDI channel one, whereas the second articulation still remains on a generic key switch. The key switch button underneath will change depending on the trigger method we have. So for example, if I set this to CC range, we can set parameters for the trigger method we have selected. The activate control allows us to determine whether a technique is switched in a normal method or via a latched method. When this is set to latch, when you key switch, the articulation will temporarily change before switching back to the articulation you had already selected. When it's in normal mode, when you switch, the switch is permanent. The round robin options are only available for short articulations. And here we can see there are four round robins to choose from. The reset on transport function allows the user when enabled to reset the round robin cycle one through to four each time we hit play in our DAW. The reset from key allows the user to place four different key switches, one per round robin, on the keyboard at the bottom in order to switch which round robin they wish to hear. This is particularly useful if there's a performance on a round robin that you don't wish to hear, you can key switch it out. The transpose option allows you to change the range of the keyboard. In the middle of the interface we have the view switcher, which enables us to see different options, for example the mixing signals, the effects, and greyed out at this moment in time, we have the scale mode. Looking at the signal page in the top left hand corner we have the ability to save a mix preset and also load that particular preset. The advanced option, when turned off, enables the user to see a more simple view of the mix. Each signal has an on-off toggle, and you can click and drag each signal fader in order to change their signal's level to create a balance. And the closed signals also have a stereo width and panning control. We can also reverse these signals round right and left in the panning arrangement. The global option, when disabled, allows you to set a different array of signals depending on the articulation you have selected. At the bottom, we can scroll to see more signals. We then have the effects page where we can see there are three different effects. We have reverb, which is an overall level of reverberation. We then have the release control, which is only available for the long articulations. Um, when this is increased, we will hear a lot more of the release trigger, and when shortened to hear less of the natural room acoustic, we will hear less of the release trigger. The tightness control, when increased, will eat into the start of the sample, and that means we will hear less of the initial bow strike. If you're quantizing short notes, this can be increased, but be aware it will give more artificial sounding results. For some articulations, we then have the scale mode feature. The scale mode enables techniques which move between multiple pitches to be mapped across the keyboard according to a user-defined scale. So when we enable a scale, by choosing a scale on the left-hand side, we can see on the right-hand side the user interface is changing the notes of that particular scale. And then when we perform the notes that we wish to choose, the velocity sensitivity of how hard or soft you play will determine the interval that the scale mode automatically chooses. In the scale option, we have normal, major and minor options, but we can also choose from a degree of modes, for example, Dorian, Lydian. Now, 
The play mode determines whether triggered samples begin or end with the played note. So if you were to change this to be resolving, you would hear that when you now strike the key, the performance starts pitched lower down. Whereas the initial option allows you to start the scale from the note that you're performing from. The out of scale option when enabled allows the user to add in more notes which are not part of the scale that you've had selected. And when we add some changes into this scale by clicking in the pegs, we can see that the scale option and the key have a little asterisk next to them. And this indicates that the scale is no longer the same as what was previously selected. If you have any further questions on fractured strings, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us at spitfireaudio.com forward slash support. Thanks for watching Spitfire Clips. Let us know if it was too long, too short, too fast or too slow in the comments down below. Hit like if we answered your question and subscribe for more clips, tips, tricks and exclusive Spitfire content.